let's get started. Okay, we're going to, my part is doing geo farming, and I'm going to go a couple of different places. And in order to do geo farming, we probably have to touch all the other subjects and topics that the other four or five leaders are talking about on Tuesday night. So the first thing we need to do is to visit KB Core. Um, Inside Real Estate, which is the parent owner, I believe, of KB Core, has been doing tr weekly training. And I've been trying to follow those as much as I can. And one of the things they pointed out that I didn't know, if you go to the upper right-hand corner and click on your name, click on My Profile, one of the things that they told us that I had not been doing is click on, why is that there? Click on edit profile. Yeah, you can set up in whatever room. I, I'm not doing the big screens tonight. Okay. So click on edit profile and you go down to like the fourth or I mean the fifth line. You'll see cell phone, work phone, direct line, email, and then from email. I didn't have from email uh, filled in. And from all the training I've seen from Mike and everyone, no one has mentioned that to do that. And the trainer from Inside Real Estate indicated you need to fill that so that the it reduces the amount of spam or non-deliverable emails. I don't know what it does. They just said that, that this is what they found out. We have to add our email, even though it's repetitive from the line above. That way the system knows this is the email it's coming from. And it's just not the KV core or inside real estate generic email or electronic stuff that they have. That's awesome, Mark. I'm going to let everybody know because there's a few agents that have been having trouble with their newsletters going to spam. So I'll definitely get the word out on that. Yeah, did I know because I know you found out that we had to do like under 25 or so. And I thought maybe that was going to correct it. But according to this, this instructor, this was an extra step. Mark, so, can you show us how to get there one more time? Yes, you go up to your name in the upper right hand corner. Click on your name, and then you'll come down and you'll see my profile. Click on my profile. And then you know, in the left hand, 60% of the page, you'll see agent profile and that in that corner, you will see edit. So you click on edit profile, go to the left under your picture, contact information, I have all mine filled out, cell phone, work phone, direct line, even though I only have it clicked to show on the site is my cell phone. I've still filled the other three out. The email, which is the first one that everyone fills out. And what they indicated was that second now, line from email is to fill that one out. Somebody have a question? I thought I heard a question or a comment. I think it might have been some background noise. Okay. So that was that was total news to me. And so then we talked about filling the rest of the information out, like designations, lender, and then on the right hand side there in the middle, social media and more. I think I already had all that filled out. Um, and, and that's about as far as I, that's about the only thing that they added that was, was totally new to me. And I thought, well, it'd been nice if they would have put out a broadcast email or something blast to let everyone know that we needed to, to add our email there. So, but I, I don't remember, Justin, I don't remember that I had a lot of people not getting my email from spam based on, uh, let me ask you this question. When, when you, every time you send out a, a message, 
you'd get a t- a uh, a blurb at the top of your email saying twenty three of twenty five will get this or two won't get it. Or, was that from spam or was that just bad emails or opting out? That's bad emails and opted out, Mark. Okay, so it wasn't anything to do with spam. And, and okay. what I've noticed, Mark, is it's uh, the, a lot of the agents that are going to spam are agents that have just started sending their newsletter out or are newer to Red One Realty. So what I figured was happening was like just because of the amount of it, of agents that we have now and everybody's sending emails from <clears throat> essentially the same kind of family of KV core databases. I, I figured that's what was causing them to go to spam, but I'm going to reach out to everybody that I've been working with on their newsletter and let them know to update that email slot. Hopefully okay. we'll, we'll see what kind of feedback we get. Are you for the retraining? Yeah, my first day. So Did you bring your computer? Mm-hmm. Did you get an invite? I think so. Can you just jump on the, the invite? Because I'm not doing the the big screen okay yeah it's only for an hour and yeah there should be somebody else here and they if you need help they should be able to help you if not come back in okay okay Okay. so i thought that was pretty interesting uh justin have you been and and justin i think when you do a broadcast to all the folks you've been working with you might want to tell them about the the training that uh, inside real estate is doing on, on uh, KB Core. They're going over a lot of stuff about uh, squeeze pages. Um, um, what a, and all the different things so that you can try to do some uh, networking and uh, your geo farming for free and cut down on some of the expenses. Like one of the things they told me, Justin, maybe you've covered this, I just didn't hear it when you do a property boost if you if you have a landing page i think it's the landing page you you can attach to that uh to that address or to the code that um they they set up for that and every time someone responds to your property boost that landing page will automatically send something back out to the person that responded or they responded to the uh, the property boost I haven't done that yet, Justin, because I it's, it's I, I have to watch it 20 times to be able to pull that one off. But uh, have you tried that one? I have not personally. Okay. I okay. haven't done the, the property boost in quite a while, but um, that does sound interesting. Sounds like a good technique. Yeah, I just uh, it takes me a long time to, to learn new things on, on IT. So that's one that's on my agenda for uh, to be completed by the end of April. So, okay, anything else in KV Core? The training sessions they have every week is really, really great, uh, at least as for this novice. Uh, and once you can you listen to them during the day, then they'll send you the recording. And then you can go on site and get all the, rec- all the other recordings that you have missed. But they really do a pretty good job of explaining stuff. Uh, and the fact that they share them just like uh, AMP does is really neat. And you can listen to them as many times as you want. <clears throat> okay, so that's part of, of uh, geo farming is getting the email to to the, our, uh, our clients. The next thing I want to go over is I want to go to my Facebook page and we talked about geo farming. This is a neighbor of mine. Can you see uh, Bill here in a golf cart? Not that you know it's Bill. Yep. I did an interview with him. He's my neighbor two doors down, and we did, uh, well, I guess it was 17 minutes. But <clears throat> he's a usher at Huntington Park and at um, the arena where the Blue Jackets play. Uh, so he he does that. Then he, he's he works at the golf course up in Dublin. So I interviewed him because he he's in our neighborhood, and it's pretty neat to have someone that does things in, in their retirement that they're having fun. They always enjoy joy stuff, and he's got stories about what he's observed at Huntington Park, and 
at the arena and just different. So I, I've had one interview with him so far, and we have another one scheduled for this month. So I posted this on our uh, on our Facebook page for our neighborhood, which which I control. Then I also posted it on YouTube. So it's just a way to to post stuff from a realtor, from a neighbor, about a neighbor, without saying anything other than his name is Bill. Don't say his last name. Don't say his address or any of that stuff to reveal anything because I don't want all the sports freaks to go to his house and ask for free tickets. So he enjoyed it. He laughed a lot. We had a great time. And some of the residents thought it was pretty neat that we have someone in a neighborhood that does things like this. Uh, so that was one. I've got two more set up. One is a retired Delta airline. I'm going to say attendant. I'm not sure what their politically correct word is. It used to be airline stewardess, airline attendant. They're the people that serve coffee and food that walk up and down the aisleway and tell you to, to uh, stay in your seat, don't go to the bathroom, and buckle, buckle your seatbelt. So we have a lady that was with Delta for 30-some years, so she said she would. She sort of backed out. She said she might. So she's one of mine. And then I have two nurses and the first responders that have said that they would, so they're also on my list. So the goal is geo farming is about the people that live in the neighborhood. I want them to know that I'm doing this. I want them to know that we have some positive professional people in the neighborhood and get them to know their neighbors. And that way, when they see stuff from me, they know that I'm just not a spuck or a realtor. It's only about a transaction that I care about the residents within our neighborhood. So I'm trying to do that on a regular basis, uh, which has been pretty neat. I also do, <clears throat> I also do holidays. I will post on the Facebook page and Sometimes I'm really surprised at how many times, how many hits I get. Christmas time, I put up pictures of Christmas lights. In springtime, summertime, I take pictures of landscaping in our neighborhood, and I post that on, on, our, on our site. The, one of the nice things that I love, oh, you guys already know I do this. This is what this is what's sold in the month of... Oh, I didn't put a month. Uh, oh, it had to be October. So I post stuff like this so that they know. And I always get lots of hits. This one, I had, I had 210 reaches, and there's 426 homes. So I was felt pretty good at 210 hits. The other thing I do, which is one of my favorites, if I can find I thought it was right at the top. <clears throat> Well, he was there 20 minutes when I was setting up. Right here. This is my favorite coffee shop. Every Sunday night or Monday morning, they will post the drink of the week. And I repost this to about 12 different locations. I just share it. And uh, I'm now a top contributor with... Um, with the with a uh, coffee shop because I contribute so much, but I always get comments. I mean, I don't get a lot of hits, but heck, 183. I was pretty happy with that. So I I I've, I've told you before. I do about 85 percent of what I post is non real estate based. This past six months, I have changed that. that I'm doing more real estate stuff because. Uh, I don't get nearly the biggest percentage that listings in our neighborhood that, um, that I should. So I'm trying to change my tactic a little bit, put a little bit more content on real estate. I have started posting on Thursdays and Fridays, all the open houses within like a five to 10 mile radius of our, our neighborhood. I will do one for one for Saturday and one for Sunday. I don't do just one for the both weekends because <laughs> some people only have an open house on Saturday or on Sunday. And I don't want to post both of them in the same same post because I don't want somebody to go there on Saturday and real and not know that it was only for Sunday. So I go through and I post. 
the thing I one other thing I used to do, and Justin, you might like this one. Uh, I used to compare the week of like the first full week in March in 2024 to the first full week of March in 2023. And you can go in the MLS and you can do that, do that comparison. It's a little bit time consuming, but you can go back and find out how many sold that week, how many new listings were that week, how many coming soon that week, how many went in contract that week. So you can do things like that. It is time consuming because you've got to plug in more information, but some of the residents will warrant, well, what was it like last year? Sometimes I'll do a month this year, like the month of February versus the month of February for 2023. Sometimes I'll do it by quarter. At the end of the calendar year, I always do an annual basis. And in our neighborhood, we have uh, one story ranches. We have two stories. We have three stories, which are the townhomes. And I will do a separate post for each one. The three, the two stories that have two bedrooms are in a separate. The two stories that are in a three bedroom, that's a separate post. And I will go through and put them in, in order of when they close so that everyone can see, well, here's what January sold and the days on market. Here's what December sold and the days on the market and what the list price was and the, and the selling price or sold price was. So I'm doing far more information than uh, ever before on real estate. I'm not there yet. Uh, I do uh, this one right here, declutter for a cause. That's sort of real estate related because people need to declutter their homes uh, before they sell the house and before we do that walkthrough. Uh, so I try to post things that helpful household hints to see what they can do to improve their house as just from a living spot or in preparation to that they're going to list their house or, or make a sale. Uh, anything on that part? Did I lose you? Anyone sleeping yet? Well, you guys are quiet. I must be talking too much. Okay, now we're coming down to the nitty gritty on um, geo farming. Go to go, we go to the uh, county. Maybe some of you have already did, did this. Uh, I went. I subscribed to an app called Homebot. It is the app today said it was twenty five bucks. I thought it was thirty. It will. It will give you information about, um, and I'm going to show you one. Uh, you can put 500 clients in this app, and it will give information about the house that all your friends and neighbors live in. And so what I do was I went into my street. I started where I, I lived, Mossy Creek. Uh, change that to 20. Change it to 50, an address sequence. So you go you go to um, the auditor page and then you just highlight everything like so, and then you print. So then you print and it comes down to a CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, I'm assuming you've all seen that before. And then you just cut, you just eliminate uh, information because all you really need is name and address city zip code so i do that i did that for the whole neighborhood and i do that by neighborhood uh that i'm, I'm trying to work and then i come to homebot well i thought i had it pulled up Has anyone tried HomeBot? I have not, but I like the sound of it. No. Okay. So log in. They have a uh, strange way to log in. Okay. So right now I have, 
I have 40 homeowners. I, I've lost a couple, a couple people that paid cash or they're, that's the house they're going to die in. I'll take you to my client that just sold and moved out. That way not revealing any life-threatening information. This is... <clears throat> okay, so this is when they this when they bought the house they bought it September 26 2014 or 2019 for the price so it gives you basic information and when I go through this if you got questions or I'm going too fast please stop me so you go in and you just populate as much information as possible which reminds me I should start at the beginning let me add one let's add a client so this is the this is why I had you go through the auditor and get some basic information. First name, last name. Uh, now you're going to have to. Hopefully they're your friends. You're going to find a way to get their email address and the telephone address. Sometimes it'll be in their Facebook account. Other times I use an app called Ben Verified, and oftentimes half the time I can find an email address and their telephone number off of been verified. I have no idea how much I pay for that monthly or annually. I just pay it because I, whenever I get a, a number or a name that I, I can't find any information out, I go there and do a research and they tell me way too much information than what I want, but I'm after a telephone number and an email address. So you go through and you fill this out. It's pretty simple. So when you complete that, you just go to next and it will tell you what you missed. Home detail, address, and then it, it gets pretty, uh, some of the stuff you will know. If you're the agent that that's, was represented as a buyer, you're going to have, have this information. So that's pretty neat that you already have that. You'll probably have a good idea of the loan. You might not know the interest rate. Uh, and what I do is when I fill it out, I either leave it blank or I will put a, the average for the for the day uh, into the interest rate. And I always know whether, you know, it's a fixed or an arm or conventional or FHA. Uh, that's pretty good. So I usually know a lot of this information. Uh, I don't know if there's always another loan. And the other owner would be the, the spouse or the partner of the person that they're buying it with. And then profile. So pretty simple information. Anybody have any question on that? Is this Is stuff that you, you already much, have in your contact information to a large degree? Hey, Mark, how much does that cost for us per month to, to use that service? The home buy is I, the, the, uh, the app, the, um, the website said $25 a month. I thought it was 30, um, so it's 25 or 30 and you can do 500 if you have if, to buy another 500 is only ten dollars a month so for 25 bucks or 30 bucks i and i and i can show you i have some homeowners that are using this um watch i'll probably pull one that she doesn't use it but Kelly opened, Kelly clicked, clicked, Kelly viewed. So I know they're using it. They're at least looking at it. And every time they look at it in the upper right hand corner, well, my name shows up. Thank, uh, good, thank goodness, not my picture. So I'm in, I'm in front of them once, a, I believe once a month when this goes out. I might be wrong on this once a month, but I was happy to see how many people are actually using it. And I had a couple of clients that were thinking about selling. They were using this app to see about what their house is worth, what they would net out, just what the market was doing. And then they called and told me they were thinking about selling. And then they decided not to. But it was like, wow, they're using it for what this is good for So I thought it was great. And that way they're not going to Zillow or some other place to try to find out what the value is, is worth or calling another agent or 
calling a friend that's a realtor. They're, they're using the app that I provided for them for free. Some of these folks, I signed them up without asking them because they're clients and friends. I just did it. Uh, sometimes I'll call, call them and say, hey, I'd like to send this to you. And they said, okay, no problem. And they're using it. A couple of my friends that paid cash, they looked at it once and they said, nah, this isn't anything that we want to do. Questions? I've, I've got a question, Mark. Yes. Uh, so I see that there's an app for this that homeowners, sellers can download. But for you, um, from an agent perspective, are you, like what is like your main purpose of using this? Is it just to keep like your your clients or homeowners informed of um like their their current situation? Like what's like what's your main purpose behind using HomeBot? My my main purpose is a couple fold. Number one, it's an app that I provided for them for free, and every time they use it, they see my name, mm -hmm. and they're going to look at stuff about their about their home about their mortgage, the value. One of the okay. things that this, the system is supposed to allow them to do is if they want to pay more on the mortgage mm -hmm. or if they want to pay it off in, in like 10 years instead of 25 years, that mm -hmm. this will help them do that. Oh, cool. I've not done any of that. I've just provided this to them. I read about it, Yeah. Uh, but I haven't done all those functions and I've only had very few questions. Other than the fact people said this is really nice and it's nice to yeah. see the value of our house and about our loan because they'll go in and plug in the exact uh, uh, property tax, interest rate, and their payment, and they 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 make it for closer to reality than what I can, and they they love it and I get I get comments all the time about it. So basically, like 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 I for example, like as as an agent. Like I would want to use this and add in all like everyone that I've either you know done a deal with uh, that own a home or um, uh, home you know people who are homeowners but maybe not clients yet that may want to list. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to fill up all five hundred slots with people I know. I don't know that our neighbors live in our neighborhood. Just anyone I can I can convince them to do this. Mm -hmm. And I have started putting it out on my on a couple of Facebook pages. So okay. hey, here's what this app will do is free. And then they will associate themselves to me. And okay. I've never called a person when they look at this, I never call any of them. Okay. Because I tell them, I say, look, I want you to use this. Don't worry. I'm not going to call you. Okay. And it's, okay. This, sir, this system is free? It is free to them. And I think $25 a month is pretty pretty free for me. Okay. 25 for the... Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And then you can get a co-sponsor. And I believe this is $300 a month. I could be wrong. Uh, and... I have not, I did contact one of my co-sponsors about doing this and we have not talked about it. So um, I don't even know who all is on here. I know it's not my lender. So, and then the lend, the, the advantage to the lender is they can see what we're seeing and they can see when someone is starting to look like they might be get, getting ready to sell. Okay. Then they get they have information too. Got it. Thank you, Mark. Sure. It's just one more tool we can give our clients and potential clients information about their home, about their loan, about what's going on in the privacy of their own home. And they don't have to go to another agent or to a lender to get it. It's right here in front of them on the app. And I know it has get leads here. I have not gone that far. Um, I started this like a year ago and I haven't made it beyond that. So 
I was more happy trying to get people to sign up. And uh, I've been disappointed. I'm only at 40, but I'm still pretty happy with 40. It's better than none. Questions, comments? So I would, so I would use this to all the contacts in your cell phone, the contacts you have in Gmail, and go to the Franklin County Auditor and start with your street and your neighborhood or where you currently live or where you used to live if you recently moved and start adding people. You get the spreadsheet and you just start creating uh, spreadsheets and working it and adding them in here uh, at whenever time. I also think this would be pretty neat when we do our geo farming, if we do community meetings, like if you have a clubhouse or a meeting room or the, uh, the library where you invite your neighbors, friends to, uh, to come and, and you're going to talk about what's going on in real estate. Uh, you can use this as an example as to what this can do for them and things that they can see uh, and tell them it's free and no one's going to call them. Uh, I have a couple of apps. I have another app. It's called, it was called HomeSnap. It's now homes.com. It's, it's not the homes.com that just rolled out. That's going to compete against Zillow. It's something that you could have on your cell phone. You could walk, you could drive up to a house that's for sale. Your client could click on it, take a picture, or type in the address, and they would see virtually everything that they would see on the MLS or on, or on RPR or anything. It would have everything about the house, the street, the uh, the neighbors, the uh, school districts. Everything was there. So I, I, I've been using that. I've used a similar approach to get people that I know that will be looking or the similar interest to this. And I tell them, I said, look, my promise is if you use this, I will not call you until you call me. Uh, and that's worked to some degree uh, because if they're, if they're going to the app, one of these two apps of mine, they're not going to Zillow and then Zillow is not selling the lead to a competitor realtor and I'm losing out. So that's why I emphasize to them, I will not call you unless you call me first because I don't, I want them to stay with me into the apps I provide them and not going to Zillow or realtor.com. And then those two entities sell, sell the, the contact information out to other realtors and I lose out. So part of this is selfish. Part of this is to provide a service to my clients and future clients so that I don't have to pay a fortune buying Zillow leads or doing other things. Anything else? This is the quietest script I've ever heard. I got another question. Don't Go ahead. I got you, Mark. I got you. Um, home snap so is i've seen a couple agents use it i uh, just don't really i know you mentioned how you know clients can look up the info about a house like everything that was see on mls and rpr on it um and things like that's a good information for the client but like like for me as an agent like what um is there what is there any benefit to home snap and if so what are the benefits of using it for my day to day Okay, I, I use home snap it's on my phone. When I'm out driving and mm -hmm. I see a house that just perked up or maybe it's a FISBO, I can pull out my, my app on my phone. Well, first off, I'll stop and not drive. Uh, then I pull out my phone and I will look to see about the house. That way I, I can do like why I'm sitting there in front of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. And I can see all the information that's out there on the, on the internet. And if it's a, if it's a house like coming soon, then I'll have access to all the MLS because, you know, we drive around all the time looking at neighborhoods and see if it's where we want to do farming or if we want to market to that neighborhood. So I, I do the same thing and I pull out my app and I look to see about the house. 
Yeah, so I think. I, well, I guess my really question neat. is, like, why why would I use you know why would I use that over the MLS app to get info about the house? Uh, because I don't have the MLS app on my phone. Oh, okay. Okay. And and this is an app that I can give my client, and I can, and my client and I can see the exact same thing on the on this app. Because how okay. many times do you, do you you send something to your client, and what the version they're looking at, and the version we're looking at is different, right? So this way, everything they see, I'm seeing the exact same thing. Okay. And I was looking for the Home Snap app actually on my App Store. I got iPhone. And I'm not seeing it, but I know yeah, Home Snap was bought out by Homes.com, but oh. but my Home Snap still still comes up. Um, For me, Home Snap doesn't come up, but Homes.com does. So okay, um, it probably like discontinued it uh, for new people to download. I'm guessing. Yes, but I'll find that out though. Oh, thank you, Mark. Yeah, yeah home snap. Um, we're updating our database of home values. In fact, should be done in a few minutes. Yeah, so it still comes up. And and I listened to the homes dot com thing twice. Uh, I had I set up an appointment with them before my call set up one for the uh, for the amp folks or for the all the red one realtors and. And I opted out of buying into their program. I know that their goal is to replace Realtor.com and Zillow. Uh, but I also know that they, they're they looking for us to buy leads or to, to get it for lead program. And I'm not buying leads from Zillow. And I'm doing my own geo farming and doing it my way. Uh, so... I didn't see the advantage and I, I also struggle with maybe not, maybe I'm, I'm wrong in this part, but my fear is the, the realtors that uh, are listing 70 houses a year. I, I was afraid they were, they're going to always be at the top of the list and, when I list my 10 a year, that I'd be so far at the bottom that I would never be seen. Uh, that was just a, a something that I couldn't get past in my in my head. So if anyone has a different opinion, I'd be happy to hear. But um, after listening to it twice and talking with a couple of, of brokers that I know, uh, I, did, I opted out of doing going the extra step. Did anybody get anything, a different version? Malika, did you hear anything else? I have not heard anything different. Okay. Scott, how about you or Justin? No, not really. I mean, I, I've used Home Snap before. I I do like that one for sure um, because the information um, I've used it for social media. I think even if, I mean stuff like that. But uh, sorry, I don't have more input. Man. I thought at first I was going to join, and then the more I talked to more seasoned realtors that do lots of deals um i got further and further away from it but they did say if you're buying leads from zillow this would probably be a good might be a good thing for you to do i don't know i want to know is what i've been told okay anything else so um, that's all I had. I thought we might have a few more questions, but um, I we still have some time. If anyone has any comments, questions, or have a question about something we did not cover tonight. I got one more. Sure. Um, 
do you have an agent profile um on homes.com zillow etc um and if you do um you know what other websites or you know places you recommend to have an agent profile um I have my profile with Zillow. <laughs> um, I go there every quarter and update any information that they might have that's wrong. Uh, I found errors on Zillow because I had a previous broker that took credit for a couple of my deals and I had to go in and plead my case and tell them that this was my deal, not my broker's deal. It wasn't with my call, it was somebody different. Um, so yeah, I, I put my information out there as many different places as possible. Whether I use them or not, I haven't bought leads from Zello in years, uh, but they still track every all of my sales. They have all my data, just like I'm buying leads from them every month. Uh, I'm sort of surprised that they do that, but uh, you know, I, I put all my data, realtor.com, I'm on HomeSnap, I'm on... Uh, Home buy, I wherever I can find a spot, I put my information out there. And I try really hard to put my information up there to the point where they want me to start paying for something and then I usually don't pay. I hate to pay for stuff that I don't see a, a benefit from. Yeah, one of the benefits is to for Google. Uh, because from an SEO perspective, you get picked up with from, you know, with Google if you use those keywords. Okay, you have. To, can you explain that a little bit more so I understand a little bit better? Yeah. So the more times you're out there and you're saying, you know, that you're a real estate agent and you reference uh -huh. your areas, the more that Google, when they do the web crawling of those different sites. Oh, okay. see it, and then you know the chance that you rank higher, you know, for <clears> your areas, the more likely. And that's without having to pay anything. You know, that's just the natural Google algorithm. Yes. Okay. I understand that. So I guess me, me keeping up on making sure my Google is current and with Realtor.com and NAR that it's a good thing that I'm doing that, right? Yep, you got it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions or comments or a different topic? <clears throat> so one of the things that we do on Tuesday nights when we do, do these one-hour sessions, we all try to do a specific product or area and... Um, Geo farming just in, encompasses so many different things. So that's why sometimes I'm, I talk about KB Core and, and different other topics that one of the other leaders is, is doing training on. And I apologize for that. But when you're doing KB Core, you need a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And it all comes together. And you just try to, to, to make it happen. So my last question is, how many of you have uh is there a how many of you have a facebook page in the neighborhood that you live i do i created a really small group for our neighborhood so it's it's on my personal page but then it's a group and i invited uh -huh. them to that group is there not is there not a if your if your group was called Southwest Ohio, they, so Southwest Ohio is not not the name of that Facebook page. Correct. I have like a it's it's an invite only group. So and what I post there are things that are just specific to our neighborhood, but also you know more generic things like here's things in our township <clears throat> that have. Um, been up for sale or sold but the one thing that I the reason why I do this is because I'm an intel world and 
I don't want it to come across that they can't share things if they're upset about whatever is happening with Intel. It just makes it a really private little group. And so when I'm posting things that are about, you know, sales in the in the township, you know, they appreciate it. But yet, you know, it also gives them the privacy to share their thoughts on, you know, whatever may be rocking someone's world at the time. Okay, I, I think I do something similar. These seven Facebook pages, I, however many I have for neighborhoods, they're all private. Uh, you have to, there's two questions that they have to answer. One is, you have to give me your where you live and do you agree to our terms and conditions? And then the other uh, admin and I, we will look to see if we can verify that they actually live in our in our neighborhood and if they don't live in our neighborhood, they get declined. And if you're not a member, you can't see all the posts. So, but the thing I like is it's the village of Hayden Crossing North. And when people are looking for an HOA for our subdivision, they can find it by typing in Hayden Crossing North or one of the other ones is the Falls of Hayden Crossing. One of them is uh, Hayden Farms. So I've labeled it like village of Hayden crossing North comma Dublin comma Ohio comma four, three, zero one, six USA. I think I, I spell it all out somehow so that they can know that which subdivision, which HOA that they really need. But we do keep other people out and we do monitor it. If we have bullies, we have spam, we have, trash we do delete post we have banned a couple of people uh and we when another resident uh would do a uh, a protest or uh, a re report one of this post uh we'll talk we will get together and talk about it and we will oftentimes remove stuff that's garbage because we keep that crap out And a lot of people can say what they want. Sometimes it's not pleasant. So we try, and sometimes we, I will send a private message to the person that wrote it and ask them to either rewrite what they wrote or to take it down because it wasn't the atmosphere that we want for this uh, page. Oftentimes they do. The nice thing is whenever something happens, the people will call me or ask me. They'll ask me things about the HOA because the attorneys for our HOA has told all the board members they cannot post on social media or act like they know anything about the HOA outside of the HOA meeting, which is stupid. Um, and so they come to me and they ask me and I will often do private answers instead of telling it to everyone. Then the, the hilarious part is they will list with somebody else. And then this outside realtor who knows nothing about our area, sometimes the realtor will call me or the seller will call me and ask me about things going on. And I tell, politely tell them, your contract is with the seller or sell your contracts with a different realtor. I don't want to lose my license, so I'm not allowed to talk with you. And then they're like shocked. So yeah, sometimes I've had to teach people a lesson the hard way, but I don't want to get in trouble with the board or anyone, so I don't talk with them. And it's I got my point across. So, Mark, is uh, Dry Creek Drive in your <clears throat> in your uh, neighborhood? I think isn't that uh, uh, South uh, Hayden Crossing South? I, th I think it was the falls at Hayden Run or something like that. Yeah, the, the falls at Hayden Run is on the south side of Hayden Run Boulevard. And just to the east of the Hayden, Hayden um, the falls of Hayden Run is is the uh, Hayden Crossing South. They're a smaller uh, subdivision than ours. They, they're at the corner of Avery Railroad Tracks and Hayden, Hayden Run. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I'm at the corner of Cosgray and Hayden Run by the Giant Eagle. Okay. It's one of my first sales, and I just sent a, 
CMA out to them the other day, and I was looking at that neighborhood and thought it was. Yeah, they don't have a clubhouse or a swimming pool. We do, but I've never been in the swimming pool, but we use the clubhouse. And I can't crack that HOA. They won't let me be a member because I don't live there. So I, I've, the Falls of Hayden and Run had their own HOA or had their own Facebook page. And it was pretty much dormant from what I could tell. So I started a new one and I did a mailing over two or three years. And I'm, I think I'm up to like 80s. I might be up to 80, might be, maybe it's only 50, but I've grown that. So it's been, it's been a lot of hard work to get there, but at least I've made a dent. And I do, I sponsor a yard sale, an annual yard sale for all the subdivisions in our area. And so I, I advertise that plus the pictures I take for landscaping and Christmas decorations. So I have, I have, I worked it and, you know, sponsoring a yard sale in a community like that, I spend less than probably $75 a shot advertising and with new signs or replacing signs. So it has really been an inexpensive venture to do that part of the geo farming and walking the streets or driving in a car and taking pictures of landscape or, or uh, winter decorations is just time consuming. I did have one guy in the summertime get in his big, bright, large pickup truck, roll his window down, had his camera sticking out, following me around the neighborhood, taking pictures of me as I'm taking pictures of landscaping and front yards. It's like, okay, whatever gets your, get your, get, you get off one, go ahead. But he didn't post him anywhere. He never called me, never talked to me. He just followed me and took pictures. I, I didn't tell my wife because she'd get upset. What else, folks? Yes, my biggest problem is that, sorry, Scott, um, I, I live in a place that it's saturated with Facebook faces. I mean, just, it, it's like next to, I mean, there's home and garden. There's this specific area, this specific area. It's, there's so many of them. I, I don't even like know how to even try to approach it. And I mean, I join all of them and, but you know, and, and follow and try to share, but it's just so, like I said, so saturated. You probably have to find the weakest one and try to, to, uh, to post as much as you can in, um, in, in the weakest one or, you find your own dish and create a new one, and then you got to start from scratch. But sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, <clears throat> I was lucky with the farms, Hayden Farms. Uh, Heather Walker was a is a Red One realtor, and she lived there, so she made me co co administrator. And then when she moved out, she just turned it over to me. So I already had one that was built. I just had to expand upon it. And sometimes some uh, areas just don't don't like Facebook pages. Who else has done a Facebook page that can help help uh, Scott give a couple of suggestions? Scott, one of the things that I found that was helpful is I uh, would, if there was something that came up, I would just private message the person off to the side to just kind of, you know, say, Hey, I didn't want to post this in the group, but here's, you know, yep. you know, if, and it just offer your, your help. <clears throat> and if they, you know, want to engage with you, great. But if not, that's okay too. And I always just say no pressure. You know, Justin, it's probably not, or uh, Scott, it's probably not too late to do a, an analysis of 2023 go through the area for that for that Facebook page and do the solds for the whole year by three story, two story, one story two bedrooms, three bedrooms just do an analysis and that way they can see what their house would be like the other thing that we did we nine of us meet the first Wednesday of every month at Der Dutchman we all sit at one a round table and 
of the seven, there's nine of us, so the seven that's not Linda and I, uh, two of them, I've, I've already sold their house and they moved into a new build, which I didn't get, they didn't put my name down. I understand why. But everyone at that table, I will be the listing agent when they when they go to sell. So now I'm working on my second breakfast group. We that is the first Wednesday from nine to ten fifteen, ten thirty. Uh, so my next group is going to be hopefully on a Monday morning from like ten to eleven thirty at their Dutchman, and that way we set it up in sort of in a corner round table, and we can all chat and talk and have a civilized discussion. And 95% of our discussion is non-real estate. Uh, they will ask, I wait till they ask me and then I will, I will respond, of course. But uh, that's not, even though the goal was for me to maintain that relationship and that when they, they get ready to sell their house, I'm their guy. But we talk about family and stuff going on in the neighborhood. And uh, sometimes we talk politics because we're pretty much all on the same page. And that was a surprise to me. Uh, but um, we just chat about stuff going on. And then the women on all the other Thursdays go to Newgrounds Coffee House and they have a room that they reserve and they have coffee from nine to sometimes one o'clock, just chatting. So we worked on it. We work in our neighborhood. The funny thing is I have, I've had four people tell me that when they pass away, they've already told all the relatives that I'm listing their house. No one laughed at that. Or you all on mute. I was, I, I'm flabbergasted whenever I hear that all the time. Yeah, when we list our house, we already told everyone that you're listing our house. Or when they die, that I'm their guy that they have to call. Now it's just to have to, have to outlive them. Anything else? Wow, this is really quiet. You guys made me work tonight. I've had to do all the talk, a lot of the talking. Anything else we need to cover again or new? Otherwise, we can call this an evening. Mark, this was very helpful, and the, the new apps that you're showing us. Uh, also helpful. My baby agrees. She said yes. In the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, thank good. you, yeah. Mark. Yeah, I don't. I don't change dirty diapers. I did that for a long time. I don't do that anymore. So I can't help you there. <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks.